our decisions today and help us make good, wise decisions. Bless everyone that's here visiting and with us today. And just uh, go with us as we go through the procedures and bless us and thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If I may ask everyone to please turn off their cell phones or at least put them on silent um, so they aren't disrupted during the meeting. Roll call. Ms. Britton. Meredith Braley. Here. Bill England. Bill John Baker. Jack Baker. Here. Carly Buzzer. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Bradley Cobb. Joe Crittenden. I didn't make Jody Fishinghawk. Here. Yeah. Janelle Fulbright. John Marvin. Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. Tana Gloria Jordan. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Soap. Here. David Thornton. Here. Kara Callum Wan. Oh, honey. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Next order of business is approval of minutes. Unless there is an objection, I would ask that we approve these minutes in total to June 16, so June 26, and July 14. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of the minutes? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Madam Speaker, uh, I make a motion that we move items uh, one through six under new business uh, ahead of reports. It would certainly be more efficient, more convenient for uh, the affected uh, nominees. Do I have a second to amend the agenda? Any discussion on amending the agenda? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, so the next order of business will be um, part of new business. Item one is a resolution confirming the renomination of Letitia Stevenson Pablo. Ms. Brown, do you want to be here today? Uh, she is at the clinic. She's available for questions. This will be her third renomination, and uh, she's a little shorthanded up there. She has. Uh, did both hers and Christie's uh, case load today. Moved yeah. and seconded. Any discussion on the approval of Ms. Pablo? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Item two is uh, confirming the renomination of Sharon Swepson to the Comprehensive Care Agency Board. Ms. Swepson is here. Um, if you have any questions of her, this will be her second renomination, I believe. Anyone having, do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. And now discussion. Anyone have any questions for Ms. Swepton? Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item three confirms the nomination of Roberta Gibson to the Squaw High School Board of Education. Ms. Gibson is here for questions if you have any of them. Hi, you want to come forward, Ms. Gibson? Do I have a motion? So mm -hmm. moved. <laughs> Thank Second. you. Now we're open for discussion. Any questions for Ms. Gibson? Where are you from, Ms. Gibson? Uh, I'm a ra I was raised in uh, Stillwell. Uh, part of my uh, high school years, I grew up at Sequoia. And I've been busy working with that group for a number of years. Uh, my last name is Springwater. Uh, my maiden name and Cherokee is my first language. English is my second. Where are you living at now? I live in Okmulgee. I taught school for 34 years. Uh, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree uh, and I've taught a number of areas. Uh, Virginia, Utah, uh, Mississippi with the Mississippi band. Uh, I also had I headed up a, a parent child development program there and also the follow through program. Uh, I was a teaching director for the early childhood program, but I uh, have actual 34 years of teaching. And I've taught 23 years in a blog. You're too young. Well, I retired two years ago, and I'm 65 years old. 
I love teaching. And this is why when they asked me, I thought, I am so academically oriented that I thought, since I've been working with the Sequoia anyway, as far as the Alumni Association is concerned, I thought this would be a good time to really give my service because I've been with the Alumni Association in some capacity for eight years and I'm now the secretary of that association. I was on the board and my term was up so they nominated me as secretary. I do have Sequoia at heart. Uh, that's home for me. That's where I grew up, so that's home. Uh, matter of fact, I meet with a lot of the uh, uh, people like the past superintendents, past principals, and I remember being an office girl when I was going to school here in, uh, at Sequoia. And one of the things he would tell me, uh, you are so intelligent. I hope you get a chance to go to college. <coughs> and it's people like him, <coughs> my mentors, that is why I am who I am today. All in favor of the nomination of Miss Gibson signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Congratulations and thank you for serving. Thank you. Uh -huh. Nice meeting you. I am for the nomination of Laura Lee Smiley to the Trust Authority Board. We have Lahoma Davidson here from the EBTA uh, to represent Ms. Smiley. We also have a smile. <laughs> Move to approve. I have a second. So a second. Okay. Discussion. Hi, I'm just introducing Lori Smiley. Um, we're asking that you guys confirm her to the Economic Development Trust Authority Board. She's been serving as our as a member of our um, Micro Development Trust Authority, kind of a subcommittee of the EDTA board for several years now. She is also a loan client. Um, we feel like that's a benefit to the Trust Authority Board and she's under the agreement and our board has discussed the fact that if we ever have to discuss her loan or anything that she'll recuse herself, she won't be a part of that discussion. But like I said, we feel like it's a, a definite benefit that she has been through the system, through the program. She's a business owner and she brings a lot of experience and information to our board that we desperately need. So she's here. If you guys have any questions ever, or any, any questions of me. Ms. Smiley, you want to come forward? Anybody have any questions? Or more of these? How did the system work for you? It worked well. How long did it take you? <laughs> it took about six months. There's a lot of paperwork involved, as there is with any. Do you have any suggestions on how it can be better? I hope. I think they've hired some more employees and I think that that will help move the system a little bit quicker and maybe cut down a little bit on the paperwork. But that's everybody's wish for everything. So. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? All in favor of the nomination of Ms. Smiley to the Trust Authority Board signify by saying aye. 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 I'll the same sign. That motion carries and thank you for serving. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, resolution affirming for the renomination of Mr. Hummingbird to the Cherokee Nation Tax Commission. Motion. Motion. Got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Um, Mr. Hummingbird, do you want to come forward? <laughs> not the little one. I mean, not the young one. <laughs> the little one. <laughs> So you want to go through this again? Again? Do <laughs> <laughs> you well, have any questions or comments or do you want to say a few words? I've been here a long time and I appreciate your confidence in me. Any questions, comments? All in, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thanks for serving. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, item 6 is a nomination of Marty Matlock to the Environmental Protection Commission. Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Matlock couldn't be here today. He's out of town, but he wanted me to send his regrets for not being able to attend uh, today. He's a great asset to the Environmental Protection Commission, and I hope you'll confirm his nomination. Move to approve. Second. Move to second. Any discussion on Mr. Matlock's appointment? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. All right. 
back to uh, reports. First report is uh, Ms. Rice. Good afternoon. <laughs> we have my report for the past month, so if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer any of them. I noticed you had a, a health camp in Locust Grove. How did that go? It went well, and uh, we've, I think this is our second or third year that we've uh, worked with health, and they had a big camp this year. So uh, we just supplied some information and some um, uh, awareness material for the youth, but we enjoyed it. How many chimneys did you have? That I'm not sure of. Mr. Buzzard? Yes, uh, Sharon, I saw, or I've seen in the newspaper, the local newspaper, about the new ordinances that the marshals are going to be implementing, or, or well, the, uh, how is that coming, or is, is this something that's always been on the books that, that we haven't enforced, or? Well, we came up with a solution for the, uh, um, my mind just went blank. <laughs> For the housing covenances, okay. they have covenances, yes. and the chief yes. has wanted us to uh, enforce some of those things for a period of time. We've been meeting with community um, service and uh, housing authority and those things, trying to figure out how to best do that because the covenants is not exactly a law; it's a regulation. So we really can't just go in and write a ticket or do those things. We looked at it in. <coughs> totality and some of those things really do fall under public nuisance because uh, what's detrimental to the overall community or, or housing area. So that's how we thought we'd address it. That's why we're advertising on the front end, putting it in the paper, letting them know that we're going to start looking at some of those things as a public nuisance. Uh, give them some leeway ahead of time. Then we ordered, uh, and they'll be in this week, we ordered um, little door hanger notices that you're in violation <coughs> so that you'll get at least a couple of warnings that you're in violation uh, if it's not something of immediate and then they'll be subject to having a ticket written and they'll go through tribal court or state court. Now, is that, the, is that just to cover the, the cluster side? It doesn't cover individual uh, houses, I guess. Well, if there was a, it, it, it could. If you had a single house built and it's built somewhere near someone where they had a vicious dog and they're not doing anything about that vicious dog and you keep getting phone calls about it, we could we could go out there and under a public nuisance law say, you know, we're going to do this. Although I do think we have a vicious dog. We don't have one for at large animals, but we do for vicious dogs. So, so that would also cover an, an individual side if they had, uh, I don't know, junk, just junk all around the places and someone called you and filed a complaint. If they, if it's uh, a public nuisance, if it bothers okay. the community, yes, they can. Uh, if it sets out so far that they're, you know, in the middle of 40 acres, yes. nobody's going to care and it's not going to be a public nuisance. Thank you. I think it's good. Other questions? Uh, Mr. Thornton? Uh, <clears throat> over the years, I've kind of pushed to have a marshal that lived in our district. I just wonder if you're any closer to that. Well, on the early end, we did try by having people move into an area, and we found we can't make someone move. Uh, especially if they're homeowners. So we have opened a, a district office down in Sequoia County. Do we have anybody living down there? The closest we have is someone living uh, just a little south of Cookson. Uh, where's the office? It's in one of the housing authority buildings that they have moved uh, staff out of because of the uh, housing authority people moving into the nation. They had some vacant offices right uh, there at Salisaw. So we're trying to get one of those opened. Then you, don't, you don't have one open yet? We don't have it opened yet, but we've got half
housing authority to say that we can be down in that uh, office down there. And we're in the process of even the one in J. Um, we've just now got the equipment going in it and the one in Stillwell because you had to have wireless connection and everything else that those offices didn't have. Uh, we've been working on it since May. We have people in there somewhat, but they're not there all the time. And uh, they couldn't do their work because we couldn't get to Lawson. And now we're starting that process with the one in Salisaw. So I can't tell you when it will be up and running because I don't know how soon we'll get everything uh, set up down there. How many marshals do we have? Um, we have four on contract with CNE that work directly in the casinos. And then we have 28 that work at large for the rest of the Cherokee Nation. And could I have a list of those marshals and their addresses? I know I can get you the list. I, I've got a call list on them. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Chair. <coughs> this report is Justice Department. Is that Mr. Morton? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The only thing I have to supplement the written report is the on item two on the notable trial issues. The jury docket for September will be the second Monday in September. And on the activities, Sarah Hill, one of the assistant attorney generals at the office, went to a water a tribal water summit this week. And on the report on item as GEG, uh, nothing new to report from last month. Are there any questions? Comments? Mr. Morton on the report? Thank you. Not thank you. Mm -hmm. Item three is election commission. Um, we do have a report. The only thing I knew that's different is Curtis Moore from, I believe he's from Claremore. Is he from Claremore? He's yeah. technically from Vertigris. We do not have a post office, but he's <laughs> <laughs> Patsy Morton, uh, they have been appointed by the chief to the election commission and they are on to be um, included on the council agenda. Is that right? Okay. We're swearing in. <coughs> Item four is tax commission, Ms. Swepston. Good afternoon. I think you all have my report in front of you, but I will try to answer any questions that you have on the report. Also, make an announcement that we are doing extended business hours in the Tahlequah office on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they will be open from 8.30 to 6. And we will have that out in the paper and get it on the web and that kind of stuff to get it promoted. So we're going to try that. I now have a full staff up front and getting those ladies trained and everything, so hopefully we can accommodate that. Yes, please. One of the things I was going to talk to you about before and I didn't get to uh -huh. was uh, we were talking about farm tags yep. and that the uh, state does not have a limit on the amount of farm tags that can be purchased by a permit. an individual with a permit. Uh, we have a limit of five. Yes. Could we look at, and I understand that's our policy, mm -hmm. can we look at the idea of possibly modifying that? Because we have some rather large farming operations that five tags is not sufficient, so they're being forced to move from us to the state. And I just hate to see that happen. Um, we can uh, take because that. they were prosperous sure. and, and grew to a point where they had more than five vehicles Understand. for their farming operation. We can take that into consideration. What we can do is adapt a modification to it and take it to our commission in September okay. and let them look at that. And then if they so deem that we would bring it back as a modification then to the to So the law. you will get back for the yep. uh -huh. day? Yeah. Okay. Our commission will meet in September. So. And my request is geared toward, I can't imagine a small farming operation really needing more than five, but there's a number of larger operations that Understand. we're penalizing. And I'm I think sure it's because of a, uh, uh, I talked to your people and it apparently was because of some issues. 
But the thing about misuse is that goes to enforcement, That's right. and enforcement is is our right. our law enforcement arm. So hopefully they could yeah. they could in, enforce right. and make sure there's no misuse. And and we can look at that and see if we can do it. But we can take it before the commission in September and right. review that. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments, Mr. Hoskins? Yes. Yeah. Madam Speaker, Ms. Lewis, is my saying that the state of Oklahoma amended their vehicle tag law to. Uh, include what's essentially these utility carts that are often used in rural areas and on farms. They're they're street legal in the sense that they have lights and signals and whatnot. Um, I don't. I think that's new for the state. I just wonder if you were aware of that. I've got a couple of constituents in my district that asked me about it. No, uh, I could I give you a better it. description of it, and sure. I could probably give you a, a more precise site to the state law, but. Whether it makes sense for us to do that, I don't know. But I can get on the website for the okay. states and look because we try to keep up with the new stuff, but I wasn't aware of that. So. I think that that is the case. Okay. okay. So I'll check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Report five is Nikki Handy, South Governor. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One announcement that I wanted to make was uh, uh, to you aware of Tom Elkins. Uh, uh, it was a member of my staff that's been detailed to environmental back in December. Uh, since I last spoke to you, he applied for and was selected for the administrator position. So he is permanently in that position and we are advertising for self-governance analysts to assist me at this time. For Ms. Hanby or her report. Did good, thank you. <laughs> Next report is Mr. Hummingbird Gaming Commission. How are you, Jamie? Just fine, thank you, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, Excuse Council me. members. I believe you have a copy of my report in your package this time. I'd be glad to entertain any questions you have on that, as well as uh, if you have just a brief second, I'd update you on some of the expansion efforts that are going on at CNE. Um, in September, the uh, first of many, um, uh, we call them, uh, little hiring uh, job fairs are going to be going on starting about mid-September, at uh, for the primarily for the West Island Springs facility. And in October, both uh, West Island Springs and Catoosa will launch job fairs to fill the vacancies that they're going to be having with their new expansions. This first phase, we're going to be looking at approximately six to 700 employees. And by the time phase two is over, around the end of March, first part of, uh, of April, we're going to be looking at a total of about 1,100 employees total. Um, coming in October, as soon as the um, uh, facility gets turned over to uh, start moving machines in. We're going to be moving machines in starting about October 10th, and West Island Springs right now is projecting a November 10th opening date. The um, Catoosa expansion for the gaming floor space only is looking at a December 15th opening date. And there are other dates that correspond with the uh, openings of the other food mm -hmm. venues, the hotel, theater, and ballroom areas. So. Uh, those dates are, of course, going to be fluid just depending on the, uh, the weather and the cooperation of uh, Mother Nature and the ability of the uh, contractor to get their job done on time. But right now they're looking at, uh, they've actually moved the West Island Springs opening date up. That's why you're looking at November 10th instead of uh, the end of November. So they moved it up a couple of weeks. Uh, so we're going to be uh, extremely busy coming here in September. We have a lot of uh, activities going on for the expansion. Uh, the hiring, the machines, the facility inspections, and uh, if you see me next time, my hair is completely white and white because we're going to have a lot of, a lot of, go no offense to Bill Young. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you look at me funny. I just, I, I just want you to know I wasn't talking about you. I, I was looking at your father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. But if you have any questions about anything that's in the report, uh, I'd be glad to answer those or anything else that may be going on. Uh, Jamie, what about this, uh, the land determination you talked about, the Porch Creek land, uh, people and talked about the UKB. Is there any more updates on, on that? Uh, no, sir. Uh, in fact, I checked on that as of last week, and there has not been any further activities on that. What I does this mean? What, what's the meaning of it? Uh, 
right now, I don't think it's going to have any any uh, bearing on us right now as far as what we're doing, but uh, it does have the potential to uh, impact the NIGC's decision on how they treat the case that is uh, before them with the UKB's land determination. I talked with the uh, Office of General Counsel even last week, and they have a concern about uh, the, uh, the letter that was sent out from the BIA. Um, I know that NCAI and NIGA, uh, the National Gaming um, Association, and of course NCAI are looking at providing a response to that as well. Uh, the organization that I'm chair of, the National Travel Gaming Commissioners and Regulators Association, is also looking at weighing in and really trying to figure out exactly what does this mean, how do they expect this to uh, apply to land determinations that are pending right now as well as any future ones. So right now I, I don't have a real good read as to what impact it will have on us, but as, as things develop and we get more information from both BIA and NIGC, I'll update you as soon as I have that. Questions, comments? Mr. Hemmingberg? Did good, Jamie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 7 is clarification, Mr. Hembry. We have a new date uh, of, I believe it is August 16th uh, for our next clarification meeting, and uh, we are continuing on the on the process. But we are making process. And it's still our hope to uh, be done before the beginning of the next fiscal year. Thank you. Item 8 is a GEG report, and Mr. Morton said there's nothing new to report <coughs> on the GEG. Moving on down to old business, uh, item 1 is an act amending the criminal code. Ms. Um, Cal Watts. Madam Chairman, uh, if I may, based on uh, our working group that met just prior to this meeting and based on the uh, assertions of Becky Johnson and Attorney General Hammonds, I believe it would be uh, uh, proper at this point to table this matter and place it on the next uh, rules agenda. Items 1 and 2. Items 1 and 2. Um, Mr. Thornton. Only please put on these three acts as it's possible. Okay. Mr. Thornton wants to get that wants to be on as a sponsor. I you, can you make a motion? Move to uh, one, one and two. Second. Two and three, I'm sorry. All, one and two. Oh, one and two. Mm -hmm. All in favor of tabling items one and item two in total signify the same aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item three is a resolution proposing uh, to amend the Constitu Cherokee Nation Constitution eliminating term limits. Ms. Town Watts. Are you go. working on that? Or? Well, yes, uh, we have made a draft resolution and we have turned it uh, over to the uh, Attorney General's office for, for the, their input. I haven't received any input in it as of this time. Um, but. Um, let me go get Ms. Cowan Watts. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, we haven't had any input at this time from the AG's office. So, so there's still discussion in regard to this? Or yes, and, and, and uh, I would welcome anybody's um, uh, comments uh, <coughs> in, in getting that done. Ms. Cowan Watts, we're on item three under old business uh, term limits. I'd like to remove that. Just, I'd like to withdraw it at this time and bring it back at a later date. Okay, thank you. Withdraw item three. Okay, the uh, next item is new business and we've accomplished one through six. So item seven is a discussion of possible action on officials' compensation. Mr. Barton. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the uh, compensation committee had a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock and uh, they sent out a new report. I haven't had a chance to look at it real good, and I'll make a motion to table this for the next month. Second. second. Motion to table and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, moving on to it. Does anyone have any announcements? Yes, Ms. Coates. I would like to introduce my family, my father and stepmother who are here, Gwen Coates and Kathleen Coates, who are visiting from Redding, California. Would you like to come and say a few words? Sorry, I didn't like that. I just feel really honored to be here. I'm very, very pleased to uh, see everyone and uh, very proud of my daughter and I am just honored to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Any other announcements? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, an 
announcement is everyone's invited and you should have received an email on Saturday, this Saturday from 10 to noon. There's a Cherokee Women's Grassroots Leadership Group meeting at the Pace Center. Ben Stevens is hosting the meeting, uh, providing refreshments, and at the end there will be a tour probably about 11.30 to noon. So if you missed earlier tours of the Pace facility, they're, I think they're turning up on Friday. They're, they're beginning. And so we're going to go over elder services and several of the groups are coming out to talk to the elders and potential caretakers of older members of the family and that's the intent of the meeting. So, thank you. I want to read my disclosure I talked to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Todd, Todd wrote this up for me. I wish to inform the council that my mother, Ginger Fishinghoff, owns rental properties. Her, rental may, her renters may apply and or receive rental assistance from the nation. I want to make a public statement that I will not assist anyone in application for such assistance. Further, I do not have any ownership interest in these properties, nor will I share any proceeds generated from these properties. I do not perceive this as a conflict of interest, and I make this announcement for informational purposes. Todd, I filled out the disclosure with you. And can you talk about that? What do we need to do about it now? And there was something about the body taking a vote to make sure I can still. Well, no, I mean, well, well, yeah, under the Sunshine Act, it, you know, you, you've made a, made a disclosure, and if uh, in, in any committee that deals with housing assistance, in particular rental assistance, you should remind that you did make such a disclosure that you don't believe there's a, a, a conflict of interest, and, but it would be a fact. If there is a vote in the future, if there uh, that the uh, if there was a uh, uh, the, the body would vote whether there was a conflict of interest or not. So, like in community services, I can make this announcement again. And if yes. If somebody says it's your problem, we take a vote. Yeah, but okay. that would be prior to any housing housing matter. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Just count once. Thank you, Madam Madam Speaker. Uh, so. I mean, this is different when we did this new act. I had asked for opinions on how we were supposed to properly disclose, and there was a form provided that either you or the Attorney General's office had done it. So yeah, I we filed both at it, yeah. my husband's business, Tulsa Peer Drooling. Yes. Filed that appropriately with Secretary of State. But this is different. This is different because this would be, an, you know, uh, you know, she made it in this committee, but it can be made, you know, it should be made just at any time before there was a housing. Uh, a housing vote. Because I have no vote or control no, right. or anything over what happens with those construction things. Right. That the um, the, the su yeah, the, the, su the, the, so the sunshine. So I don't need to do that statement. No, because even on uh, your advisory member, uh, member of the uh, mm -hmm. CME, CME, right? The CME, CME board. So you don't take any vote. Right. Not but you, you do need to make that disclosure what you have done. Okay. On, on Todd. Okay. I'm sorry. Todd. Yep. Todd, do you make this disclosure, for example, I think you said it was some kind of construction company? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would she make this disclosure before a meeting that contained an issue pertaining to uh, for her con or his construction company might do work? Is that how we do it? How? Give us an example. Well, as to... <coughs> And this is something I probably want Diane to concur with, and she's not she's not here. But um, mm -hmm. you would make this type of disclosure before you took a vote on something that you had direct control over, or, or, or you know, i.e., a housing authority bill or rental assistance, and you know, and that's in, in reference to the, the the Sunshine Act, and we can all go back and and, and, and review that. In this instance, you know, you you don't. Because of the, the corporation code, you gave up the control of tribal corporations to the board of directors. So it's the board of directors that that, that you know really that they answer to. Uh, uh, so in, in, in an instance of a company doing business with C and E, I cannot think of an instance where she would need to make that type of statement before taking a vote, unless it was to amend the corporation code. And, and assume some more control over the tribal corporation. Okay, so <clears throat> like if our husband receives income that comes into our home, that's not considered a direct or indirect conflict for reporting purposes? 
she made a reporting purpose. <coughs> okay, and what about identifying it uh, at a meeting that we discuss C and E business? Well, you discuss C and E business, but you don't. You don't have you, this body, for example, doesn't let contracts from C and E. C and E. Let the board members that we put on C and E do make those decisions. Yeah, yeah and, and probably so in an instance. For a board member not be considered a conflict if your husband was doing business as a vendor or sub-vendor with C&E. I mean, I'm trying to get clarification. I just no, want to... I don't know. I'll, I'll have to get back with you. I, I you know, on, on that, you're, or you're saying that, well, and, and I also, I don't know. I mean, uh, as to, the only, the only instance that I could think is that maybe on the confirmation of a board, of a board of director, maybe, but I don't know that either. Uh, but you mind researching this disclosure requirement so that there's will. no question? Because now I'm more confused than I ever was. I'm just, I would like to know exactly when we disclose and when we disclose publicly versus disclosing in writing. Well, I just want to make sure I don't make a mistake. Well, Madam well, Speaker, the memo that I have. Yes. The, the memo I have from the Attorney General and Mr. Henry are tribal counsel legal representative the I do not have any that you me, me did not have any direct contracting authority in this matter the contract was let by Cherokee Nation Enterprises that done according to their policy although you're a member of the senior advisory board Cherokee Nation Enterprises is ran via the board of directors which the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council does not have direct supervision pertaining to that and I have been provided with a copy of that memorandum, but apparently it was asked for in the year 2006. We passed our new policy concerning those conflicts after 2006. So this memorandum, I don't know how it applies to the current law or whether it does apply to the current law. And Todd, you reset that and clarify, correct? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll give everyone a, a uh, in-depth memo as to reporting requirements. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty simple under under the Sunshine Act, you know, as to you know, what exactly is, is is required. It says, and I'll just read it, but I'll and I'll have a, a memo and, I'll, and also get the yes, the uh, and and I'll CC the Attorney General's office to see if they have any. Uh, uh, conflict with it but uh, title 28 CNCA section 10 disclosure of business interest required any employee or official that does business with or attempts to do business with the Cherokee Nation or its instrumentality shall file a written statement with the Secretary of State concerning the particular business which is contemplated to do business with the Cherokee Nation said statement must be filed prior to such business business contracting or doing business with the, the Cherokee Nation or its instrumentality such statement shall be made a public record and shall only include the name of the business, the address of the outside business, and the percentage of business owned by the employee or official. Now, that is that is the reporting requirements. Uh, the, there is a conflict of interest provision in here, uh, which was the reason for Miss uh, Fishing Hawk's uh, disclosure. Um, that would be Section 28, CNCA, Section 13. Uh, in a situation that's not defined by the statute, any question of whether a conflict of interest exists with regard to a member of the Cherokee Nation Council shall be resolved by a majority vote of the membership of the Council. Such determination shall be made in public and shall be put in writing and be open and available to the public. Ms. Um, uh, Fish and Hawk has just simply made this council aware that her mother owns property and that she is not to, she's not going, she doesn't have any ownership or doesn't share in any of the proceeds. If someone on this council now perceives that in this future vote that that is a conflict of interest, that conflict of interest would be, regard, would be resolved by a majority vote. But I will give everyone a full memorandum on that. Uh, one additional question. I'm a little bit confused about the written forms. Was everyone to fill out a written form? I initially had thought that they were, but they're not. It's only those who contemplate doing business with the Cherokee Nation or who does <coughs> with the Cherokee Nation. So, 
So if we erroneously filled out a form, I mean, we don't, I don't contemplate doing any business with them. I filled the form out because I thought everybody was to fill the form out. It's probably, it, you know, it is, it is probably the more conservative position to go ahead and fill one out because of the term contemplating due to, and, it, and the statute requires you to fill out a disclosure form prior to even contemplating doing it. Doing well, I don't contemplate. Well, I understand so that, you know, so. If I don't contemplate, do we need the form? No. Well, and I guess that brings the other question. If she doesn't have an interest in these rental houses, does she even need to expose? Yes, because there could be, a, she, she's going to vote on housing matters at some time during the future. And she's made that, this, this matter public now. Any other announcements? Yes, Mr. Yes, um, Mr. Brother and I are sponsoring a community meeting on next Thursday night, August uh, 7th, at the Little Kansas American Legion on Highway 412 East. Start at 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We have several group leaders there to answer questions. We will serve, we'll have a pork ride at 6.30. <laughs> Perhaps everyone's welcome. Mr. Baker? What's a pork fry? Oh, okay. It's all sequel. Any other announcements? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same time. We are adjourned.